All right, have and have not fans, here is a what if video. I mean, I'm actually pretty shocked that uh, a video I posted earlier, well, actually a few weeks, days ago, days ago, about the what if Hannah became a have. That video did pretty well, you know, all things considering. I, that was just me kind of doing a random what if scenario, but it, it seems like you all love it when I do what if, so I'm hopefully going to do a few more. Now, this is going to be kind of a arguably one of the biggest uh, what is of the series so I don't know how long this video is going to go like I literally wrote out a script but you know kind of just rereading I had like at least 20 points to make but honestly I don't even know if I need to go over all 20 but let me just put it this way the what if in theory is you know what if Jim never met Candace you know how would the series go what would happen now just to put it plain and simple I don't even know if there would be a story because again all roads lead back to Candace and Jim when it comes to the haves and the have-nots and I guess you could almost put it this way Candace was actually the one to orchestrate everything in regards to Jim Cryer because remember she had been studying him for so long before before he even opened the door when she knocked at it at the hotel you know back in episode one she said to Jim and I believe it was like episode episode two or three you know in terms of her you know seeing you at the like homeless shelter during the holidays and you know even after the cameras left you gave some homeless guy some money and this and that and basically she's done her homework not to mention she only became friends with amanda after finding out that was jim cryer's daughter so literally candace has been studying him for months before she ever you know came to his room to you know be his escort now, you also need to keep in mind that I believe it was in episode two, he told David after, you know, the whole Candace blackmailing him thing that he hadn't had an escort in about almost like five to 10 years, I believe is what he told David in terms of, you know what, I haven't had, I'm only with Captain for appearances and I haven't had an escort in, you know, almost, you know, five, 10 years or whatever. So let's just put it this way. If Jim never met Candace, I would think there would have been somebody else because remember this was at his 50th birthday you know i believe Catherine was like you know what's taking you so long and remember he was at the hotel with candace and really he was like oh i got something in the office no you need to come home now for your surprise birthday party so given the fact that he was having a midlife crisis so to speak and was just wanting to throw everything away i'd say that if it wasn't candace it would have been another woman but here's the thing this woman would have to be a Candace in the sense that it's somebody that Jim would have taken a liking to. Remember, the only reason he had an interest in Candace wasn't just because she was good at sex, but just because she was a master of mind games and manipulation, pretty much a female representation of who Jim Cryer was as a person. Now, in terms of the family aspect, I'm not going to lie. I don't think there could have been anybody on the level of Candace in terms of tearing a wedge in the cry basically there are already cracks in the foundation of like the harrington family of the uh, crier family but candace just went in there and just made things even worse by making those cracks into like a giant sinkhole if you will now i'm not going to sit here and blame candace like the deaths of amanda and you know veronica acting the way she is towards jeffrey but remember it this way candace was the one to give jeffrey the confidence to come out to his parents Candace was the one to get Amanda to persuade Professor Kane for a retake of her exam. It wouldn't surprise me if, let's say, Candace didn't tell Amanda what to do, that Amanda most likely would have just flunked out of law school. Because remember, she didn't want to be in law school anyway because she's very indecisive. She even told Catherine about it, but she's like, no, you're not going to quit. And then Professor Cannon, you know, remember, the only reason she got the retest was because she dressed up like a little, you know, skank so to speak went back and that's when professor kind of took a liking to her came over to the apartment and raped her because he thought she was an escort like candace was now again if candace wasn't there or you know there to manipulate you know amanda it wouldn't surprise me if amanda would again just float flunked out of law school because she never would have presented herself like that to professor cannon would she still be alive um Maybe I, I will say this much. Remember that the stress and whatnot of the rape is why she kind of went off the deep end. I don't know. She would, don't think she was taking her meds and whatnot. Per, and again, this is just, okay. Let me just put it this way. 
again, uh, I like to make these analogies, like kind of like um, DC Comics when it comes to Batman and Joker, no matter, you know, if you've read comic books or heard, you know, all these like different timelines and comic book stories and alternate earths, if there's a Batman, there's, there, for every Batman, there's the Joker. And then when it comes to like the Flash TV show, if you watch this, you, I know with time travel, they always talk about if you go back in time and prevent one event from happening, something will happen to take its place. And honestly, it might be something worse than what you prevented. Meaning that let's say if there was no Candace in Jim's life, it's possible that there will be another Candace, so to speak, that could be even worse than the Candace we see on the TV. So all I'm saying is, let's say if Professor Cannon wasn't the trigger to make a man to go nuts, maybe the stress of law school would have caused her to crack because let's say, again, if there was no Candace there to influence Amanda to dress up like she does and persuade him with her womanly wiles to get the retest, Amanda might have cracked under the pressure of law school if she kept failing because number one, her parents were making her go. Even Jim was like, you're not quitting law school. And then she even told Jim in the uh, courtroom is like, look, you know what happens when I'm, you look, you're ignoring me, dad. You know what happens when I feel ignored, meaning that she would harm herself. So again, it wouldn't surprise me if one day she's, and remember she was on campus. She did not move off until Candace was like, oh, you can move in with me. So I don't know if she would have had like the same access, like, you know, medication and weapons to like, well, you know, scissors or whatnot to hurt herself like she did in the apartment. But I'm just saying it would not surprise me if Amanda somehow found a way to either hurt herself or, you know, just take pills because the stress of law school was getting to her and her parents weren't listening to her. I mean, they were listening, but given her track record for like, I believe um, Catherine was like, you tried to go to, um, Fast, you want to be a fashion wait fashion designer i think maybe that's what she wanted to do after law school but there were a lot of different majors she pursued but then quit when it got too hard now when it comes to this i really do feel that in some way shape or form amanda would have found a way to off herself or put herself in the hospital because of the stress of law school when it comes to jeffrey <sighs> God knows, there's no telling what would have happened. I, I feel like Jeffrey would have eventually cracked, you know, like when he stabbed Veronica in the chest with the knife. I feel at some point that may have happened due to the fact that his closet life would have gotten too much for him. I feel like he went crazy on Veronica then is because not only had he been pushed around his entire life, but he came out of the closet. But she went through so many extremes to keep him in line that he eventually cracked. Honestly... Remember, I think that Veronica was still going to set up Jeffrey on a date. She's like, oh, this is season one now. It's like, you know what? You need to be on a date because remember that Candace confronted her. Well, actually, Veronica confronted Jeffrey. Excuse me. Veronica confronted Candace in the courtroom of the. Um, yeah, of the court. <laughs> that's right in the bathroom about her suspicions that Candace is having an affair with David, but that's not the case. And then she made a jab at Veronica about her son being gay. So remember that Jim and David were like, Oh, everybody knows that, you know, Jeffrey's gay. So I feel like in some way, Veronica still would have set him up with Melissa. I really do think that was a possibility because again, I feel like the Melissa plot may have happened sooner than later actually maybe even a little later because again Jeffrey would have still been in the closet but in order to keep up public appearances oh you need a date because remember Jim and David were going to run for governor and it's lieutenant governor so the day they were making a campaign she wanted Jeffrey to stand with somebody on the platform so I feel like Melissa still would have been in Melissa still would have been in the story let's put it that way now, when it comes to the young family, and again, this is me kind of grazing over the topics because I'm really trying to focus on the people that Candace had a real influence on in some way, shape or form. In terms of the young family, things might have been the same. I mean, literally, because the only reason Candace targeted Jim was because of his money. So that's why I say that if it wasn't Jim Cryer, then it would have been somebody else like I don't know if Candace would have met up with the Malones because really that Mama Rose and the Malones were like a Jim and David thing. So if it wasn't Jim Cryer, I feel like Candace would just pursue somebody else with money. I don't think she would have met Oscar unless the person she screwed over hired Oscar to, you know, set her up and this and that. So the Charles plot may have still occurred 
as long as Candace and Oscar met up at some point or another. But yeah, in terms of Candace, Quincy would have still been in jail because remember, the only reason Quincy got out was because Maggie saw that Candace was a threat to Jim and David's campaign and then persuaded Veronica to get Quincy out of jail. So I don't think Quincy Sr. would be dead. He would still be locked up. Quincy Jr., I want to say that I doubt he would have been found because remember, the only reason Benny, oh, let's put it this way. The only reason Hannah, because she was the first one to actually see Quincy Jr. alive, was when Quincy came back to her house with Quincy Jr. It's like, okay, you tell me where Candace is, I'll give you your um, grandson. But she didn't know, so he drove off and slapped Hannah. And that's why Benny was on the lookout. And remember that he got Quincy out of jail, beat him up after, you know, crashing the truck and playing the drugs on Quincy and then saw the photo. It's like, oh, he's with your sister, huh? So honestly, I think Quincy Jr. would have died because if I'm not mistaken, the doctor said, uh, again, I uh, remember in the comments, a lot of people, he's like, he has lupus. I believe it's a lupus disease. But aside from that, remember the fact that he had all those beatings and lashes on his back. And the doctor said, if you didn't bring him in when you did, they would have become infected and he may have died. So unfortunately, I think that Quincy Jr. may have eventually died in Quita's, I wouldn't even call it care because of those, be, um, you know, marks on his back getting infected. So even if he had his medication, I think he still would have died due to a result of the infections there. And then we move on to, let's see here. Wow, this this is a lot. I mean... I don't even think I want to get to all the points I wrote down, but I think I'm covering some good stuff here. Let's just put it this way. It goes back to what I said at the beginning that Candace was the reason that the cracks in the foundation for the Harrington and Cryer family got bigger than what they were. But I really do think that things may have played out. Maybe not exactly the same, but in some elements, things would have just gotten worse. I mean, like I said before, everything was not on solid foundation. Like literally the criers were falling apart. And just because there was no Candace doesn't mean that Hannah still wouldn't have worked for the criers. That still would have happened. Meaning that thankfully enough, Hannah would have been there to be the spiritual support for Catherine as she was going through the breast cancer. And when it comes to Jim, wow. I really do think that, you know, things would have played out similarly, but only if he got another escort who was on the same level as Candace. Because remember, everybody was telling uh, Jim about how, you know what, in the past you were discreet. Any kind of girl that was trying to blackmail you or con you, you just shot him for like five miles away. You could see him coming. But again, it's the fact that Candace offered him something more than just sex. She offered him a challenge. And that's why he developed these twisted feelings for her. And that's why this game of chess continues on today. So again, there are so many elements in the haves and the have not story that would have just continued on even with Candace not meeting up with Jim but again I don't feel like it will be as exciting because those two literally bounce off each other but it's just a domino effect pretty much those two meeting up in that hotel in episode one leading to the present and that's why I felt like in the finale it was just a great scene to see Jim and Candace outside of her hotel door going back and forth and it's just, to me, like a paying homage to the fact like, okay, it all started in a hotel between us two, and it's going to continue on between us in a hotel. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest here. I feel like I can just cut the video right now because, again, I can keep going and going on this subject. But at the end of the day, I feel that things may have played out not exactly the way they are now, but I feel like I covered a good amount because, as I said before, I just want to touch base on the characters who Candace had a real influence on. Because remember, she was Jim's number nine, but that's not to say if she wasn't in the picture, there wouldn't have been a number nine anyway. When it came to um, you know, Jim and the money, she probably would have just found another target with possibly even more money. But I feel like everything that happened to her with the Malones and everything, and Quincy and Warlock, it would have came back to her in another way, shape, or form. So with that being said, I'm gonna bring this video to a close. Let me know what you think, you know, what would have happened if Jim never met Candace, if Candace never pursued him as a target, would Amanda still be alive, would Jeffrey still be in the closet? And also, these what ifs are pretty fun, I'm going to admit they're really fun, so in the comments, let me know what other what if scenarios of the haves and the have nots you would like me to kind of do videos on 
next because again there are just so many various topics um aside from who killed who or who's going to sleep with who or you know who's going to do this and that but just be creative because again these videos are a great opportunity for me to just open my mind up to what possibilities could have happened if one person didn't meet another